Hey guys, Ron here, and this is part 6 of a series where I turn video game characters into Pokemon. I try my best to consider how their abilities translate into Pokemon moves and stats, and make Fakemon that can believably work within the world of Pokemon. We've made 20 Pokemon in this series based on characters like Sonic, Samus, The Knight, Sans, Freddy Fazbear, and we'll continue with some more fan-favorite protagonists, and even an antagonist this time. Basically titular characters and highly requested dudes and dudettes. Keep in mind, the types and concepts of these Pokemon aren't going to literally be the same as their inspiration. Just because I'm making a Kratos Pokemon, that doesn't mean it's going to be a literal bald man with tattoos. I want to create separate, believable Pokemon that have unique concepts based on their origin. But there is definitely a spectrum. Some are extremely faithful, while others are only inspired by the original video game character. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and click the notification bell to know when Fakemon videos come out. And please check out the previous episodes if you haven't. Let's begin with our first main antagonist in this series, a villain per se, Bowser. At least at the time I'm making this video, we're kind of fresh off the Super Mario movie. I make my videos like a month ahead, so that's definitely not the case for you guys, but Jack Black's performance was so iconic, I'm sure you guys are still talking about it. There's nothing much to say about Bowser. He's, he's king of the Koopas, can breathe fire, loves peaches, and hates plumbers. But we're not going to keep all of his traits. I want to create a pseudo-legendary Pokemon that you could trust and is simply a normal animal that lives in the Pokemon world. This Pokemon won't be a villain, and like with other fantastical animals that we turned into Pokemon, I have to try my best to not just draw Bowser in Pokemon's art style. So don't fret when I change some aspects of this Koopa. It's going to be a Bowser on fire, taking some inspiration from Fury Bowser. It'll be quadrupedal as well, but very top-heavy, so it'll still look like Bowser. I'm going to take some inspiration from the alligator snapping turtle with their spikes and jaws, as well as an ox motif. Let's do it! Starting with the proportions of the shell and arms, we'll begin with a Bowser-esque face and slowly design him uh, an original face. Fiery eyebrows, and at this point I added these whisker cheeks that look like fire as well, but that'll go soon. Fire hair and longer ox horns, I made his eyes more friendly looking since he shouldn't look evil, and subtly took out some of the signature spheres in Bowser's snout, since this is going to be a sharp dude. Originally I was going to give him a snapping turtle shell instead of a random spikes, but abandoned the idea. His arms are huge, which helps him stay in place when he shoots out a massive fire blast. I thought the arms needed some segments since I decided to not add any of Bowser's ornamental spiky bracelets and choker. It would have been too much detail and would have made him look less like an animal in the wild. Adding the spikes, but instead of random spikes, they will also be covered in heated pads, kind of like what I'm doing with his forearms. It's Bowser's colors without the black. Beware Reptorid the Stronghold Pokemon, from Reptile and Torrid, meaning hot or difficult, a Fire Dragon pseudo-legendary Pokemon. Reptorid rule over the pre-evolved forms in its territory. While ruthless leaders, they take exceptional care of their young ones. They will even let them participate in battle from a young age, to harness their natural confidence. Every Reptorid has drive to protect and rule. They spend their days training and relaxing in pools of lava. The pads on their forearms burn with passion, allowing them to melt anything they touch. When Reptorid are ready to attack, they will stick their arms into the ground, soldering the earth, combining it with their limb, stabilizing their body like a turret as they unleash long-range fire blasts. The shell on their back is impenetrable with burning spikes and a rock-hard carapace. Its shiny is a reference to Fury Bowser, and its abilities are Flame Body and Shell Armor, with the hidden ability Drought. While I was trying to make the doodle a bit less complicated than Bowser, I think I overdid it with the fire a tiny bit, but I believe I was successful in making him look more animalistic and slightly more friendly, which is what you want from a Pokemon. For the next one, maybe I'll do Tracer, one of the most recognizable characters from Overwatch, a British pilot turned superhero agent, we're not going to keep her pistols, but we'll definitely base our Pokemon on her ability to blink and even recall. She basically time travels for a second, allowing her to jump through space and even rewind to correct mistakes. But her peppy personality will really shine through, and that will inspire this Pokemon's look. I want to make a happy electric type sprite. It won't be an actual fairy, but like Florges or Gothitelle, it's going to be this vague humanoid creature. It'll have a hole in his chest that generates electricity like a jetpack or even Iron Man's arc reactor, which allows her to go super fast fast with the power of electricity. We only have like two humanoid electric types, and they're incredibly masculine, so making the first feminine electric type Pokemon would be very interesting. So we're going to take inspiration from western cartoons for the pose. Spiky hair made of electricity and a happy face, I'm going to turn her leather jacket into a collar around the Pokemon's neck, with the cavity in the chest that generates electricity. I'm going to make her legs be made out of uh, electricity as well. Kind of a reference to Tracer's ghost-like attributes, where she is kind of phasing out of existence. A trail of lightning that looks like the wings of a fairy, but also the scarf of a pilot. Changing the proportions so it's not too humanoid, literally Tracer colors, but blue lightning makes the hair not look like hair, because 
it isn't. Say hello to Circuit Trace, the light speed Pokemon from Circuit and Race, but, it's also, but it also has Trace in it. Very fun. An electric type. Circuit Trace has an electric core that propels them at light speed, allowing them to momentarily travel through time within the blink of an eye. They are experts at maneuvering through the air as they zap opponents. In battle, they will correct mistakes by quickly jumping back in time and pass by enemies by horizontally jumping forward in time. When they're above an opponent, Circuit Trace will propel themselves vertically downward and pierce their foes with their sharp electric heels. Half of Circuit Trace's body is made of pure unstable electricity, which allows Circuit Trace to phase through objects. Their infectious personalities makes their friends and allies believe in them. They love making new friends and pulling pranks. They have a new ability called Recall. Once per battle, Recall will activate when Circuit Trace misses any move, restoring any PP and HP lost during that turn, as long as Circuit Trace was not knocked out. Their shiny is electric yellow with a Union Jack color scheme. This is such a bubbly character. I love it. I'm proud of the pose and shape language too. It's clearly Tracer while also very much not being literally Tracer. Now it's time for our underrated indie character. The most requested protagonist was Ori from Ori and the Blind Forest beautiful game and very well designed character, so I'm not going to change much. I'm, I'm simply going to take this creature, combine it with an element, and give it uh, Pokemon proportions. Ori is a spirit that learns a lot of light and fire based powers. The theme of these games are Will of the Wisps, so I'm going to combine Ori with Ori's Will of the Wisps friend, Sane. I think that's Sane? Sane? never played this game, but trust me, this is going to be the cutest thing ever. It'll have a few moon rabbit attributes, and most importantly, it's going to be a cute little pixie mythical like Mew and Celebi. I've always wanted to make a fire type that represents light, like uh, Volcarona and Chandelure, which I coincidentally have both as sitting cuties in my room. I guess I really like light-based Pokemon. In fact, that was kind of the theme of my team when I turned myself into a gym leader a few years back. So we're taking Ori and shrinking him a bit, larger forehead and eyes to make it look like a cute baby, and wispy flame ears that make it look like a fire and a ghost type. Tinier body so its, it's head looks bigger in comparison, it's a trend among mo most cute Pokemon. Little nub feet that end in hooves. It's a jumpy boy so it has these powerful legs. Flame tail with arms up high mid jump. Ori is normally white but we're adding blue wisp color as an accent. Oh, notice the head was too small so it'll be uh, corrected in the final version. Check out Orisp. The Wisp Pokemon, from O, the Hebrew word for light, and Wisp, a fire ghost type. These Pokemon wield a fire that restore life to decaying matter. The ectoplasm that covers Orisp's flames allows its fire to float, be controlled remotely, and even prevents others from being burnt by its touch. The warmth provided by Orisp's fire heals all, but when Orisp is in danger or battle, its body burns so hot it evaporates souls. These illusory Pokemon only show themselves when a forest is in danger. They are quick to save lives and put them in danger despite their innocence and dependence on their friends. Orisp never loses hope and will forgive even the evilest of foes. Each individual Orisp has a unique talent and will convene with other Orisps to teach and learn each other's skills. For the sake of the environment, they are curious and love to learn abilities as they go on adventures. Its purple shiny was requested by chat as I was making it live on YouTube and its abilities are Flame Body, Cursed Body, and Flash Fire. This is a very cute Pokemon with a classic look, would fit right in Gen 1 or 2. I won't take all the credit since the original design is great, but due to the proportions, it's cuter at, at least to me. And the blue accents are sick. I'm sure it looks like a believable mythical to you. I also wanted to put it in the thumbnail, but it's the most obscure character in the video, so... And finally, the big guns, Kratos, the god of war. The dude was originally an angry Greek demigod, but we're going to take inspiration from the modern god of war games, where Kratos is a grizzled old man with a boy. In the recent games, he's in Midgard taking down Norse gods, so we're basically combining Greek and Norse pantheons to make our Fakemon. It'll be a fighting ice type with an axe. We'll reference Norse berserkers, you know, those warriors that would fight in a trance state. The same inspiration for Berserker, but bears would have been appropriate. What about the Greek inspiration? We're going to make a bipedal bull with ice horns, and it tears apart one of its horns and uses it as an axe. It can manipulate ice, so it creates ice armor and an axe head on the horn. So, I'm laying out the body of a buff creature. It's got a cow face and cow legs, but human upper body. The dude's dragging his knuckles to make it look more uh, animalistic. Instead of an actual beard, it's chin fur. It has two ice horns, one which is in his left hand. It has Kratos' tattoos, but since this is a wild animal, it's just a pattern that mimics a crack in the ice. This pattern looks both Greek and Norse in my mind. A frozen set of armor on his chest and shoulder and an ice hump felt right. It even has ice knee pads. Originally I wanted to make him have dark fur to contrast with the ice and it also made it look intimidating, but then 
the Kratos patterns didn't pop out, so I made him have white fur, since Kratos is already one of the palest video game characters on Earth. Then I demonstrated how the eyes may look, and in the final version, I extended the snout and made the eyes a bit smaller, so the dude has more of a cow face instead of the, the pig face it currently has. Behold, Glacier, the warring Pokemon, from Glacier and Steer, an ice fighting type. As young calves, Glacier wreck havoc and disregard the safety of others, but as they grow, they become more honorable and exceedingly powerful. Glacier are generally calm but unstoppable when provoked. They will not attack those it perceives to be weaker than it, unless truly angry. They ignore those that do not interest them. When in battle, they are brutal and violent. They will sever their ice horn and create an axe head using their cryokinesis. They are covered in tough ice armor, allowing them to go all out without fear of getting damaged. Fighting powerful opponents only makes them more eager to defeat their foes. Glacier will go berserk if a hair on the head of a family member is touched. If Glacier comes at you wielding both of its horns, you won't survive. They have the abilities Thermal Exchange and Anger Point with the hidden ability Defiant. It shiny is closer to Kratos' color scheme. I've always dreaded making a Minotaur Pokemon, but this was so empowering to make. It deviates enough from Kratos that I will probably put Glacier in the Pokedex of my upcoming region. More information to come in the future. I hope you appreciated all of these designs enough to leave a like and subscribe. Let me know which characters you'd like to see in potential part 7. Make sure to check out the previous episode and my other art videos for uh, even more adorable designs. Consider becoming a patron or clicking the join button to get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early and a huge discount on the t-shirts I made for you guys. Follow me on Twitter where I post sneak peeks and final art of these Pokemon too. Bye!